Hello there, fellow ex-soldiers. Kate Doe Genesis here. And if you thought we were done with Final Fantasy VII Remake tips and tricks, I got a whole bunch more for you. This will serve as a part two because I'll be referencing part one a couple of times here and there as we go over these tips. If you have tips and advice about playing Final Fantasy VII Remake, particularly advice for hard mode, which we'll go over a little bit too, please add it to the comments to help out your fellow players and myself. So here is this many more things I wish I knew when I began playing the Final Fantasy VII Remake. I couldn't just leave Aerith in the dust. I talked about Cloud, Tifa, and Barret. Well, Aerith is the fourth playable character you get a little ways into the story in the Final Fantasy VII Remake, and she is a staff-wielding caster class with the majority of her abilities and moves being long-range and support-based. Unlike Cloud, Barret, and Tifa, nearly all of Aerith's attacks are magic-based without needing an elemental materia combo. She'll only deal physical damage if enemies are close enough to get clubbed with her staff. Though Aerith thrives when there's at least a little bit of distance between her and her enemy, not just the arm's reach. Despite her appearance and healer archetype, Aerith is fully capable of wiping the field as soon as you know the enemy's weakness. Her square and triangle moves are probably the most straightforward and are best used when combined with spells. Holding down or rapidly pressing square is Aerith's basic five swing attack, which throws out small enemy seeking projectiles. After the first swing, more projectiles will come out of the staff, hitting additional enemies in front of her and doing increased damage. Both attacking and the connecting hits will increase her ATB rapidly, letting Aerith excel against groups of two or more bad guys. After enemies are pressured or staggered is when Tempest, her triangle move, comes into play. Tapping Tempest will throw out a small cluster of enemy-seeking projectiles like a weaker variant of her standard attack. But if you hold triangle instead and release when it's fully charged, Aerith will fire out a crystalline bolt which on impact becomes stationary for a short time. After a couple seconds, enemies within that Tempest Crystal's range take several high damage magic hits. While not quite as technical as Cloud or Tifa's unique moves, Aerith fits comfortably into the support role for keeping the team alive and dishing out high damage spells. One more thing I wanted to mention about Aerith is that all of her abilities that she learns off of her weapons, I don't think there's any abilities that don't have good utility in combat situations, boss fights especially, because most of them seem to amplify whatever you're trying to do. A couple of her abilities I enjoyed pairing were Soul Drain and Sorcerer's Storm, since Soul Drain not only steals MP but also pulls smaller enemies towards Aerith, getting that enemy close enough to blast them with Sorcerer's Storm and throw them back. Since your max party capacity is three active at one time, once Aerith joins, you'll be switching quite often between whom you'll have for the next battles. To make things a bit easier, I suggest creating a loadout that you can swap between characters based on their closest matching archetype. This applies to armor, accessories, and materia, of course. Luckily, in the equipment and materia menu, you can swap materia between all of your characters by simply pressing R1. Weirdly enough, this seems to be a bit of a downgrade from the classic because in the original game, you could swap entire materia setups between characters instead of just just one for one for each socket. And it's weird that that didn't carry over. But yeah, R1 does the trick. Most RPGs have a set of attributes that reflect your character's strengths and weaknesses at a glance. In this game, they can be viewed at any time when you look at your party status or when you're equipping your gear. These are mentioned in the manual, but I figure it's good to reiterate anyway. Bigger numbers are better. Tell me something I don't know, Kato. It's important to know which numbers to raise if you wish to maximize each character's strengths. Starting at the top are Strength and Magic. Both of these affect attack power and magical power. Remember, Cloud, Barret, and Tifa's basic attacks are all strength-oriented, while Aerith's are magic-based. Next, we have Vitality and Spirit. These two have to do with defenses. Vitality for physical and spirit for magical. Luck is where it gets interesting and governs both chance of critical hits and success rate with stealing items from enemies. And finally, speed has to do with the ATB gauge and how fast it charges in battles. All of the attributes can be modified by equipment, materia, or status effects. So if one character has particular attributes above everybody else's, I suggest doing what you can to raise it even further. Speaking of luck and stealing, I wanted to highlight it a little bit here. So steel is a command materia you get from completing Battle Intel Report number 7, Magic Elements Part 2 for Chadley. I emphasize stealing success in that last tip because like most Final Fantasies, certain bosses and enemies have really good stuff to steal. If you miss it the first time, you're out of luck, unless you go to a prior save, which I 
ended up doing, or come through again when you unlock chapter select. In part one, I talked about the importance of using assess. It greatly benefits stealing as well because you'll know exactly what enemies are carrying before you start burning all of your ATB trying to take something you might not even need. One enemy I wanted to point out that's worth stealing from is the Grungy Bandit. Even though you get a certain satisfaction from completing minigames with jewels, the champion belt can be stolen from the Grungy Bandit too. So if you're going to Sector 6 with Barrett and Tifa, keep an eye out for this guy. In the things I wish I knew, part one, I went over the importance of knowing your enemy and showed off a little cheat sheet of what elements to use on who. But that's not the only side of a spellcaster's arsenal. Final Fantasy VII Remake has a nice collection of status ailments too that can do a great job of thinning the herd or at least slowing them down to give you a little room to breathe. So here's the status effects cheat sheet. Poison works on organic enemies, but will still do damage to robots, minus the damage over time. Silence works on pretty much everything except tonberries and ghosts. Sleep works on just about any organic enemy. And ghosts, also for some reason. And stop and slow work on most humans and robots. As I mentioned before, bosses have their own sets of resistances and immunities, so assess first, then execute. Corneo's Colosseum in Chapter 9 is the first battle arena that becomes available in Final Fantasy VII Remake and is great for early leveling if you feel like you're lagging a bit behind. The biggest benefits here are the enemies come to you, still reward AP and experience, and after each round your team recovers some HP and MP. You're basically not using any resources except for time. The two-person team versus Slum Outlaws fight is great to farm since you've no doubt gotten your Magnify Materia at this point. I, I hope you did, because the game puts it right in front of your face while you're navigating the ruins with Aerith. Magnify, paired with Fire, turns Aerith into a human roasting machine. Give her a First Strike Materia and a Whistlewind Scarf accessory, which give her a giant ATV boost at the start of each match, and most enemies won't have a chance to move before they combust. I wanted to stress how important it is to use the Magnify Materia as soon as you get it, because this is the only one you'll get, and it takes some time to level up. Magnify increases the amount of targets for the paired spell while reducing its strength. This is much like the all materia from the classic game, but way more rare. Magnify doesn't only benefit offensive spells though, but healing and supporting teammates as well. Healing and Magnify being a pretty obvious combo. Despite how incredibly useful Magnify is, that's probably part of the reason why you only get one. So the decision falls to you, offense or defense. If you enjoy exploring your options for combat, chances are you'll be swapping your abilities and materia around as well. When you change your equipment around, be sure to gloss over your battle settings if you use them. Things aren't automatically removed or replaced with these quick commands, so if you've removed your fire materia, it'll still be bound to that battle setting until you change it. Something I missed a long while the first time I played is if you intend on using a magnified spell with your battle settings, be sure to tap L1 to toggle it on for that setting, otherwise you'll just be using the default cast. Final Fantasy VII Remake is full of mini games, as is a staple with Final Fantasy in general. The better you perform, the more awesome the reward is, generally. There's two mini games in particular that I wanted to mention here, and that's just on the side of what made them easier for me. The two I want to talk about are Darts and whack -a box For Darts, I simply advise that when you go for a shot, wait until the aiming circle starts closing, then push it to the bullseye and throw. Since it is supposed to drift by design, this might help make your throws land more where you want them to, instead of having to fight with the right stick the whole time. This isn't a gosh dang fishing minigame. Beat Wedge's score and he'll have a gift for you that you wouldn't otherwise get until quite a while later. Now for a little game called whack -a box This one becomes available sometime after you arrive in Sector 5, and I have just two tips for this one. Your equipped sword determines the abilities you'll have, it tells you this much, but also that deadly dodge materia makes this a cakewalk. Even if you're not using deadly dodge otherwise, you will decimate the high score. This is kind of a topic that leads into another one, so bear with me, if this is stuff that you mostly already know. Each new weapon in Final Fantasy VII Remake has an ability to be gained from it. Once you've performed the required proficiency bonus enough times, the ability becomes a permanent part of your character's moves. This learning system lets you combine weapons you like with abilities you like. That part is pretty straightforward. But in some cases, you'll want to prioritize learning a weapon's ability as soon as possible, because in Aerith and Tifa's case, they can get multiple new weapons in the span of a couple of short chapters. Speaking of weapons, 
Another system in place is weapon levels and upgrades gained from skill points. Skill points are something you gain from leveling up and manuscripts. More on those later. After having a sizable arsenal for each character, you might consider upgrading weapons to be tedious. If you're looking to save some time, you can go into the weapons upgrades, choose what you consider to be the priorities like materia slots, blood drinker, trade-off skills, etc. Go back to the main menu and then set it to auto upgrade with triangle. Auto upgrade will distribute points with balance, attack, or defense, whichever you choose. After this, you can toggle auto upgrade off again in case you're waiting for the next sub core to open up on the weapon. At any point, if the upgrades aren't what you wanted, you can always find Materia Lad Chadley to reset skill points for a particular character and a particular weapon for like 100 gil. It's really cheap. In normal mode, a couple of side quests, arena battles, and the Moogle Emporium can reward you with a handbook that raises a specific character's skill points by 10. These are called manuscripts, and each character in normal difficulty has three to unlock. If you decide on braving hard mode after beating the game once in normal, some bosses and side quests will now give additional manuscripts on completion. After you obtain the fourth manuscript for a max level character, their weapon levels will go up from 5 to 6. This unlocks a new subcore for each of that character's weapons. Part of what this means is that 6 materia slots can be unlocked for every weapon, letting you now use what best suits your playstyle with maximized orb capacity. There will also be a new passive skill available for some weapons called Reprieve, which will negate incapacitation once per battle. Hard mode comes with quite a few penalties. The game tells you this after you beat it the first time. The biggest of them is being completely unable to use items. All those elixirs you didn't use at the end? Well, you lost your chance. The icing on the cake is that MP also cannot be restored by benches either. So you must be careful how much you're casting too. Remember how I mentioned the importance of blocking in part one? It's essential in hard mode because most enemy moves will stagger you, including just basic gunfire. Despite these setbacks or challenges, some might say, there are a bunch of benefits in hard mode, like triple AP gain for your materia. Another benefit I already touched on a little bit is additional manuscripts, and I don't think I need to mention how good skill points are. Maxing out weapon upgrades is a good motivator. The biggest hurdle in hard mode is going to be keeping your party alive and healthy with limited MP. Thankfully, there's a number of ways to do just that. Chakra and Prayer Materia only use ATB to activate, and I'd recommend one or both of these on whoever is absorbing the most damage. Hopefully, you finish Chadley's Monster Variants Part 2 Battle in Teleport because the HP Absorption Materia will make your hard mode playthrough so much easier. HP Absorption can be linked with spells. That part could be ignored because we just cast Cure if we wanted to convert MP into HP. An extra step is not really needed. We're looking at the other materia that HP absorption can link with. Enemy skill, deadly dodge, and parry. Each of these will benefit your character, but the Algid Aura enemy skill, in particular that you learn from the Cerulean Drake, can become the strongest of these, thanks to its passive ice damage and passive healing if paired with HP absorption. Once Algid Aura is cast, you can deal damage while blocking and heal at the same time. And if we go way back to the enemy cheat sheet for damage types, most ground-based monsters are weak to ice. Just give it a try. You won't be disappointed. So if you've been playing hard mode a little bit and managed to reach chapter 3, you can grind out most materia in Scrap Boulevard pretty quickly. HP up, first strike, and steadfast block are materia I strongly recommend in each character's standard loadout. That's so your team can have high HP that reflects their high levels, can start fights with ATB, and gain ATB quickly while they're blocking. Since you'll be familiar with what comes next this time through, take full advantage of enemy weaknesses via use of elemental combos on your weapons. On that same token, be aware of the status ailments enemies will cast too. While having nap time in the middle of a fight was inconvenient in normal mode, chances are it'll straight up get your team killed in hard mode. So headbands are advised, headbands all around. Like I said, if you've played through normal mode and you're engaging enemies in hard mode, you have at least a vague idea of what to expect. So keep tabs on your accessories and warding materia combos. Now I would like to know from you what kind of suggestions and tips and tricks you have 
for the Final Fantasy VII Remake. In particular, if you're playing through hard mode, what have you learned? Besides a burning hatred for the Hell House. I've seen that floating around a little bit. Leave a comment, I'd love to hear what you have to share, and no doubt others would as well. If you'd like to go the extra mile for this channel and end up in the super awesome supporter credits, like Wasteland Legends Fen, you can do so by heading over to the Patreon and pledging as little as a buck. If not, you can do whatever you see fit, because I'm just glad you're here. Thanks so very much for watching, I'm Kato Genesis, and may you wander Midgar like you own it.